Hey, what's up friends? Hope you all are doing well and staying creative. In this video, I'll be sharing with you a base patch that I made in VCV Rack. And if you don't know, VCV Rack is a virtual modular synth. It works exactly the same way as a hardware modular, modular, <laughs> but it's free and it's, you know, obviously uh, a lot a lot easier to save patches and stuff, which, you know, you can't do on a actual modular synth. So I've been doing a little bit of deep diving into this. I am by no means an expert, but I made this cool bass sound, this bass patch, and I wanted to share with you guys. So let's dive right into the video. All right, so here's the project. I made this loop and then extended it out so it has a little bit of an arrangement, but that doesn't matter for this project. What we're focusing on today is VCV Rack. So here's this patch I made, and what I'll do is, you know, I'll, like, like always, I'll play the song first, let you guys listen to it, and then we'll dive right into the patch. So just before I do that, I'll explain a little bit what's going on. So there is this is the bass patch right here. It's this MIDI sequence that just repeats. I've looped it. Um, and then what I've done also is I've recorded like a big section of audio that I've used here. And then I've taken that and just chopped it up and mixed it in with some like sine wave and like some operator bass to give it a different bass pattern. But what we'll listen to right now is just this raw bass coming from VCV Rack. All right. Okay, so you've heard the bass. Now let's get into the actual VCV rack patch itself. So there's kind of pretty much three main things going on here. Uh, there's this SQL 16, and by the way, everything I'm using here is free modules. I'm not using any paid modules, they're all free, so uh, yeah. And VCV rack itself is free too. I'm actually using VCV rack Pro, which is like 100 or 150 bucks, I can't remember. And that just allows you to use it as a VST within your DAW. Otherwise, you got to use it just as a normal like desktop application and then route your audio into your DAW. There's a way to do it. It's just a little cumbersome. I didn't want to deal with all that. So I got the pro version. But if you have the free version, it's still this will still work. OK, so let me just break down what's going on here. So Terraform is where all our sounds are being generated from. This is our synthesizer, oscillator, whatever you want to call it. That is being routed into the filter. So this is just a VCB rack uh, stock filter, you know, voltage control filter. That's what VCF is. And that filter is going into amplifier, again, just stock VCB rack amplifier. And that amplifier is going into this texture synth synthesizer. So I can't talk. And this texture synthesizer is actually just a clone of a mutable instruments hardware module. I can't remember which module. I believe this is a clone of clouds, but don't quote me on that. Um, and then from there, this texture synthesizer is going into the audio output so I can hear it in my DAW. Um, I also have this ADSR, stock VCV rack ADSR, and that's doing the envelope for both the amplifier, which is the volume, as well as the filter, this low pass filter I have going on here. And this MIDI plus CV tool, this just allows me to sync the sequencer to the Ableton's clock and allows me to, you know, use the MIDI notes that I've typed in here. So in terms of patching, here's what's going on. So like I said, I'm using MIDI plus CV for actually like doing all the MIDI information, clock, MIDI notes, gate, all that. So as you can see, I have the octave, the pitch output going into the pitch input for Terraform, both the pitch inputs. And I have the gate output from the MIDI CV tool going into the gate input of Terraform. So pretty self-explanatory there. And that same gate output is being routed into the gate input of the ADSR. Now I'm going on to this SQL 16 sequencer. So the sequencer is actually not doing a whole lot, but it is adding, adding a nice bit of modulation to the sound. So I'm just using this top row sequencer. This plugin or module, however you want to call it, it has three separate sequencers in here. I'm only using this top one. 
And so that CV output on row one is going into the enhanced depth CV input on Terraform. And this enhanced depth is pretty much a ring mod. As you can see here, I've selected ring mod. This is a pretty cool module. You have a lot of different effects and uh, wavetables and stuff to choose from. So in this case, I have the ring mod effect, but you know, you can cycle through a bunch of different effects and like uh, sort of just sound manipulation tools. So I have mine going into the depth CV, which is ring mod, like I said, and I'm playing this sequence here. So I have these notes being triggered right here, this gate on, and let me just play the sequence so you can kind of see it go through it. So you can see it play through the sequence. And like I have the knobs just twisted randomly so that it's just randomly modulating this uh, enhanced depth. And then to sync it with Ableton, I have the clock divider output on MIDI CV going into the external clock in. And then I have this reset input coming from the start trigger output on MIDI CV. So this is just the point of this reset is that every time I hit the space bar, essentially, it starts from the first beat. So otherwise, it's just like freely running and you don't really have like a set start point. So this just makes sure that it actually starts on the right time. So now going back to Terraform, I have the main output, the audio out of Terraform going into the uh, voltage controlled filter. And this filter, I'm selecting low pass, as you can see here. So in order to select low pass, you just take the low pass filter output and then send it to, in this case, my voltage controlled amplifier. This filter is being controlled by this ADSR. And so for that, I have the envelope output going into the frequency cutoff of the filter. So that means that all these parameters that I'm modulating is gonna modulate this cutoff frequency. And likewise, the voltage controlled amplifier is also being controlled by this envelope. So again, I have this envelope output going into the CV input of the amplifier. And really the only purpose of this VCA in this case is just so we can use an envelope to modulate the volume of the sound. So with this ADSR setting the way it is, that's giving the bass that like plucky sound. As you can see, I have a very short attack and then the sound just uh, decays um, as the note progresses. And you know, actually I can mess with that sound right here. So you can see here, I can make it really plucky. It's like very plucky. And I'm gonna bring it back up. And I'll set some release if I want to. But it just becomes kind of a mess. I like where this is at right now. And then from the voltage controlled amplifier, that's going into the texture synthesizer, the Mutable Instruments clone. And it's weird, without this texture synthesizer, the bass is just like very, very overpowering and doesn't sound good. You'd be surprised how much this is actually doing. Like if I delete these cables and then bring, if I just route the voltage controlled amplifier directly to our audio output, this is what it sounds like. It's, it's like, it's just like this wall of bass, doesn't sound good, doesn't have any like real definition to it, but then we put it into the texture synthesizer. And now it's been tamed. Some whatever this is doing is really taming that bass sound, making it a lot more making it a lot more usable and pleasing, and uh, just giving it that finesse. Um, I honestly don't, I'll be honest, I don't really know how this uh, plugin uh, really works. It, I know it's some sort of like granular delays, granular synth, something like that. But honestly, what I do is I just, I just click through the modes and find one that sounds good. I'm just on this first mode right here. I have the density pretty low because if I turn it up, you start hearing the, the notes repeat because there's like a green delay it's sampling it. It's like way too much. So I kept it pretty low. And because of that, me altering the grain position doesn't really do anything. And same with this grain size. 
it's not really having much of an effect on the sound as far as I can tell um, like as I move these knobs but just overall whatever the plugin is doing to tame that sound sounds pretty dope so I'm gonna keep that so that was the VCV rack side of things now coming into Ableton and let's just talk about the MIDI real quick uh, I mean it's pretty straightforward just have this MIDI sequence um, but actually I created this sequence using this uh, sequencer right here. It's called Melodic Probability. I don't know if you guys have used it, but it's a free Max for Live plugin. Very cool. Um, it, and it's easy to use too. You, know, you can just type in your notes here. So this is the note. You got pitch, and then you can change the octave. Uh, if it decides to work, there we go. So you got your notes, octave. You can change the octave of those notes, the velocity, the length, and then you can, you know, set very long sequences as well. You have eight pages of sequences to go through. Um, I just have it on one and it actually decided to like delete my sequence that I used to create this, which is fine, whatever, create another one. But um, yeah, the sequence was really cool. You know, you could set exactly what scale you want. You have all these scales. Um, you could do the pitch, the, you know, this is the probability part where you can set like the percentage that each note, um, the probability that each note will hit and the probability of what pitch it's going to be. So that's really cool. You can get some very cool modulation. You can add some swing, yada, yada, yada. I highly re recommend you check that out. I've made some dope patches using that. But essentially, I took that sequence, created a new MIDI track, and then on the input, I've just selected the bass channel and then just recorded that MIDI and then put it into here. That's that's all I did. So that's where all these MIDI notes came from. And a really cool thing that VCV Rack is doing, one of the modules on VCV Rack, it's like adding these extra notes in very randomly. And I'm not really sure where it's getting that from, to be honest. I don't know what's causing that, but it's really cool. So if we listen back to this sequence, every now and then you can kind of hear it add like a new note and it sounds dope. Well, I'll try to point it out. See right there? It went do -do 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 like right here. So for some reason, yeah, like that time it played it differently. Again, I'm not really sure why it's doing that. I love it. And that's why I also like recorded just this whole thing to audio so I get a long take that's just fixed and I can get all the, just capture all that randomness. Um, my guess that it might be probably from Terraform. There might be some little like uh, randomizing elements within Terraform that's causing it. Maybe it's the sequencer, maybe it's the grain delay, this texture synthesizer. I'm not really sure to be honest, but it sounds really cool. Um, so nice little happy accidents. That's all part of the music making process. Um, and then lastly, I'll just show you how I chopped this up. So let me uh, mute that channel. Come into here where I actually recorded this bass out. It sounds a little bit different because I have a filter on here. Taking out those high frequencies. I might decide to like modulate that filter throughout the track. So that's that full recorded bass audio. And then what I've done here is just, you know, as an intro idea, I was thinking maybe chopping that up and mixing that in with some other different bass lines. So let's listen to that. And this is pretty simple. I have a, let's just listen first all the bases together. So up here, this is just a very simple sine wave base right here, just using one operator. It's on sine wave playing this pattern, just going from a sharp to F. I have this other operator bass that's like more percussive. And 
And for that, I just have a sine wave on operator one, a sine wave on operator two. Operator two is set to negative 20 dB. So it's like pretty low, but it's just adding a bit of harmonics. Um, the algorithm is this, just going straight up and down. So each operator is just feeding into itself. And I have the envelopes set as such. So that's giving that plucky sound. Cause you know, with my bases, one, I like to use a lot of different bass lines that complement each other. So, you know, one of them is a plucky bass that's adding some percussive element to it. Then uh, we have the sine wave bass, which is not plucky or percussive. It's just more of a sustaining. It's just something to add like that low end floor. As you can see here. It's just filling in some of the gaps in the bass. And then, of course, we have our VCV rack bass, which I've just chopped up and placed in positions that seem pretty like they work, you know. Just then all together. There you have it. That's how you make this specific operator pass patch base. <laughs> um, you know, feel free to screenshot this. Here, let me put it back up on the screen in case you didn't already do it. Take a screenshot of that. Make that patch yourself. See how you like it. And of course, you know, add your own flair to it. You know, mess with all these little effects. There's really cool stuff. Um, you know, I'll probably, you know, if I was to take this base and make it maybe even crazier, uh, which I might do now that I say that. I'll probably use this uh, second and third row on the SQL 16 and modulate some other parameters, which, you know, why don't we just do that right now? That's a good idea. So let's take CV output from row two and let's modulate the shape depth. All right, so let's bring that attenuation up. Let's uh, just activate some of these things. Just randomly place this and let's see how that sounds. Turn that off, turn that, okay. <laughs> It's interesting. I'm not going to say it's great, but it could be useful for something. Maybe not this track. Let's take this. Let's try it on. Let's try taking this actually, putting it the other way. Okay. Ooh. I kind of like that. Maybe I'll do it. Uh, put the steps at 15. That way it's not just like looping every bar so that it has a little bit of offbeatness. I like that line, that's pretty cool. modulating this step I'm just dragging it up and down that's pretty dope I like that I might I might use that we'll see but yeah just I was just giving you an idea of stuff you can do because there's so many possibilities with modular sense like that's the great thing about it. You can make as complicated or as simple of a patch you want. Every time you open up VCB rack or, or if you have an actual modular or whatever, you're creating a new synth every single time. I can take these, modulate whatever I want, create these very evolving, moving bass lines um, or whatever lines, right? Synth lines, bass lines, even percussion. And it, it's not to say you can't do that with like just plugins and stuff, but it's a new way of thinking about the sound and uh yeah it's a pretty cool aspect of sound design i love it it's a very new uh sort of world for me i'm just getting into modular modular synthesizers eventually i do want to get a hardware one 
But yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful. If you did, leave a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm because we all know that algorithm be important if the video wants to get views. Maybe you guys don't know, but I'm a YouTube creator, so I know. I'm just rambling right now. You probably aren't even watching anymore. Peace out. Hope you guys are doing great, which I said in the beginning of the video. All right, whatever. Bye. Peace.